So how will our coasts look in the future? What do we have currently? We have currently a rapidly changing coast. This is because of climatic drivers, such as sea level rise, but also socioeconomic drivers, such as population uh, migration towards the coast, coastal migration. Sea levels are rising, uh, have been rising with at 1.7 millimeters per year for the, during the last century. And this uh, rise has accelerated in recent years with current rates of sea level rise at around 3 to 3.5 millimeters. This will increase the frequency of flooding, but also exacerbate coastal erosion and maybe lead to loss of wetlands and coastal lowlands. At the same time, people are migrating towards the coast. Coastal urban centers are growing. We therefore have an increased exposure to natural hazard and increased risks to population and assets at the coast. This makes the role of adaptation essential in coping with these risks. Due to these increasing pressures, the need to adapt will dominate in the development of coastal regions in the future. Adaptation options range from defending the coastline with hard engineering measures to retreating from the sea's impacts to safer hinterland, but also in including other solutions such as uh, household level measures and precautions. At the same time, adaptation is starting to depart from cost benefit as the only criterion. We need to adapt early because, for example, coastal works have uh, large lead times. We need 30 or 40 or 50 years to plan and install uh, flood barriers. At the same time, we also need to deal with uncertainty. New approaches such as adaptive management and adaptation pathways are becoming more and more essential in dealing with, this, with these uncertainties. And at the same time, humans are increasingly able to shape the coast and affect or enhance natural dynamics. A good example is the implementation of ecosystem-based management measures, which try to replicate the system's natural dynamics and at the same time offer the possibility to coastal communities to adapt. The objective to reach sustainable solutions and develop a sustainable coastal environment requires a broad involvement of coastal community stakeholders in the planning and decision-making process. Results are best when both natures and societies, system dynamics are considered an approach that is known or described in the, con in the concept of integrated coastal zone management. Now, what does integrated coastal zone management have to deal with? There are various processes and tasks along the coast that uh, people are facing. One is coastal protection, protection from, uh, say, flooding, from erosion, uh, as a result of uh, climate change. There is recreation and tourism, uh, which aim to um, maintain the attraction of coastal land and seascapes. There is shipping and harbor industries. There is fisheries and aquaculture. Uh, there is environmental and water quality management. And finally, the production of energy and building materials. So all these tasks need to be faced and addressed uh, by the coastal um, stakeholders and the coastal zone management is uh, the approach to do that. So what are the final aims, objectives of integrated coastal zone management? It aims to mitigate and reduce risks such as flooding from storm surges and shoreline retreat. It wants to carefully or sustainably use the coastal resources, coastal resources such as fish, algae, sand, biochemicals, space, etc. It needs to conserve or re-establish natural coastal assets, biodiversity and ecosystem functions and services. We believe that integrated coastal zone management, when it's uh, applied um, in this sense, um, it has a var variety of advantages. It integrates the sea with the land uh, and the coastal zone, even as far back as the river drainage basins. It harmonizes natural system dynamics with socioeconomic processes. It breaks up sectoral structures and boundaries. Then proactive adaptation to climate change and socioeconomic development is um, an important 
a part of it. It's supposed to support coastal ecosystems integrity. It's supposed to prevent or alleviate conflicts in decision making. And why is the utilization uh, of regional economic potentials? Uh, so altogether, a long-term sustainable development of coastal regions is uh, to be seen. Some measures uh, that uh, are taken within integrated coastal zone management um, uh, should be mentioned. One, for instance, is that stakeholder dialogues and stakeholder participation has to be in increased more than in the past. We need uh, everyone who has concerns and uh, who lives at the coast and has uh, interest and concerns to be included in the planning and decision making. So finally, I would like to give some examples. While it has been uh, discussed for a long time, the practical part of it uh, is only coming along uh, recently. Uh, it uh, is important uh, that uh, we connect the natural coastal dynamics to the uh, human and man-made uh, processes uh, within the coastal zone. And that's why uh, we have to try to uh, respect the value of the natural coastal assets such as beaches, dunes, mangroves, coral reefs, cliffs, uh, etc. And the way to do this is by measures uh, that are funded on uh, the ecosystem values. We call these measures ecosystem-based management. And these ecosystem-based management measures, uh, they are ideally they are cost effective and they are self adapting. That means uh, if we allow nature to do the work for us as much as possible, we get the best results. And um, one example where we can do this, for instance, is in a coastal protection uh, strategies. One measure uh, how we can do ecosystem-based uh, management in coastal protection is that we do not stick with a, a hard structure a main dike line, but we open uh, the dike and allow the sea uh, to bring water and sediments uh, into the area behind the dike and allowing to grow the marshlands or the wetlands upwards with rising sea level. So uh, to give more room uh, to the natural process uh, dynamics. And another example might be that uh, setting up um, offshore wind parks could provide um, a multifunctional uh, use of uh, the offshore zone. Because uh, when you have a wind park uh, in, out in the sea, in the same area you don't have fishing or uh, sand mining or shipping, so you uh, maintain a fairly intact part of the sea uh, below the offshore wind park. And if you use the space, for instance, for uh, aquaculture assets, uh, then you uh, can combine energy production with aquaculture production and uh, you gain uh, sort of a win-win uh, solution. The coast at the end of the century will be very different from how it looks today. Adaptation in the form of protection, retreat or accommodation will be essential in forming a new coast. Combinations of the above options are also possible. ICZM is an important tool for planning a sustainable coastal future and coastal communities will need to decide early about the type of coast they envisage and integrate adaptation in planning.